March 3rd, 33-year-old Sarah Everard spent the early evening hours at her friend's house. They consumed a bottle of wine, talked, and it was at 9 p.m. She said goodbye to her friend and decided to walk home. Her death clock was now ticking. <laughs> The walk to Sarah's home would be approximately 50 minutes, but it was a destination that she would never make. And although part of the route she took through a dark park many would consider ill-advised, the rest of her journey, by all accounts, was down a well-lit, crowded street. It was during that walk she spoke to her boyfriend for about 15 minutes, to which they arranged to meet the next day. An appointment she would never keep. She was last spotted on a security camera, passing someone's doorstep. The moment that Sarah was saying goodnight to her friend, diplomatic security officer Wayne Cousins was clocking off work at the American Embassy. The Embassy, also located in South London, was 10 minutes away from Sarah Everard. The next day, when the police were alerted of the young woman's disappearance by her boyfriend, police started investigating her disappearance, checking streams, sewage areas, and surrounding parklands. With no sign of Sarah, on March 6, they launched a public appeal. From there, they started checking all the security footage in the area. Street cameras, hotels, shops, buses. It was on March 8th, near housing estate where Sarah was last seen. The police blocked it off and a forensic team showed up. It was on the 9th of March they made a statement that they'd made a significant find, which is believed to be CCTV footage from a bus, that of which is to be a vehicle that pulled up beside Sarah as she walked home, with a license plate matching the vehicle of Officer Wayne Cousins. And with only two years on the force, this is only the second time in a week that Officer Cousins has popped up on his employer's radar because it had only been a week before that he'd been cruising South London and he stopped his car and got out and walked up to the window of a fast food restaurant and exposed himself to some young girls. Then he casually walked away and got back in his car. But as he did this, one of the teenage girls that he had exposed himself to had the hindsight and the courage to follow the man and get his license plate number as he drove away and called the police on him. But I guess for some reason the police were too busy to investigate Officer Wayne Cousins because it was never brought to light. And there's no record of anybody speaking to him about this minor infraction. It was at midnight on March 9th the police officers announced that they'd made an arrest on the disappearance and the murder of Sarah Everard. A certain police constable has tonight been charged with the kidnap and murder of Sarah Everard. Wayne Cousins, aged 48, has been remanded in custody and will appear at Westminster Magistrates Court tomorrow morning. Sarah's family, of course, have been informed of this development and remain supported by specialist officers. But at this point, cops still didn't have a body. But nevertheless, they arrested Officer Cousins and his wife, who they believed had helped him dispose of that body. Storming the house at 12 midnight and taking them both into custody. Investigators were to focus their search in Ashford, Kent. At a disused paintball center, about an hour and a half outside of London from where Sarah had disappeared. And although cops never said how they settled on that location, it's believed that license plate technology was able to track Wayne Cousins' car. And although the cops were keeping their cards close to their chest, the public all knew that it wasn't going to end well. Like everybody, I'm shocked and appalled. And, and I totally understand uh, why this has triggered such a wave of feeling on, on this issue, uh, on the issue of, of safety of women. But not only did Everard's disappearance bring a wave of anger to the public, but it also brought an equal amount of speculation. 
like at Everard and Cousins met before. Were Cousins being a married man? Was it an affair gone wrong? And what was his wife's involvement? Was it sexually motivated? Or was Everard a random victim? Wrong place, wrong time. And did he use his badge to get the woman into his car? And speaking of which, why did he still have a badge when he was swinging his cock in front of teenage girls only a few days before? And although with plenty of tabloid speculation, the cop's lips were tighter than the Velcro straps on a cripple's boots. But now that cops had cousins in custody, they had to find a body. And neither he or his wife were too keen to help out in the search. But not only did they want to find Sarah's body, but they also wanted to find her mobile phone that had been receiving texts late into the night before it had been turned off. With the search mainly focusing on the couple's home and the surrounding areas, as well as the disused paintball field. And cops knew, after finding Sarah's favorite necklace, that they were getting close. And I believe that it was some egghead philosopher who once said, Seek, and you shall find. At this very early stage, we are not able to confirm any identity, and indeed, this may take us some time. Specialist officers have been with Sarah's family to update them on the investigation and to continue to support them as best we possibly can. The news today that it was a Metropolitan Police officer that was arrested on suspicion of Sarah's murder has sent waves of shock and anger through the public and through the whole of the Met. I speak on behalf of all my colleagues in the Met when I say that we are utterly appalled at this dreadful news. Our job is to patrol the streets and protect people. And although the cops were taking their time releasing the identity of the body, they knew goddamn well who the stiff's name was. Found in a swamp, in a builder's bag, and if insiders' reports had to be believed, it wasn't pretty. And the fact they could only identify the body with dental records. We could only rely on leaked reports and hearsay, and that's that the clothes were disposed of, the body was found nude, and had been cut up and set on fire. But deciding on a cause of death had proved to be difficult, and after two autopsies, it was still inconclusive. Whether or not the girl had been raped was also a source of contention. But I'm guessing that Officer Cousins didn't take the pretty blonde out to the forest for a picnic. And as details started leaking out about what had actually happened to Sarah Everard, the Twitter mob started whipping themselves up into a self-righteous tornado, calling for men to be put on curfew and for them to take back the night as if it ever belonged to women in the first place. And in the week that the woman Sarah Everard uh, was abducted and we suppose killed because remains have been found in a woodland in Kent. I would argue that at the next opportunity for any bill that's appropriate, I might actually put in an amendment to create a curfew for men on the streets after 6 p.m., which I feel would make women a lot safer. Honey, if it'll keep me away from you, I'm all for a curfew. And as married father of two, Officer Wayne Cousins arrived at court to be formally charged. If he had a tale to tell, well, he weren't sharing it. With press and public alike wondering if that fresh gash on Cousins' head was awarded to him by his fellow co-workers, the price of his sins. And although women and their pussy-whipped boyfriends had been warned about showing up at a protest to take back the night because of the COVID, they decided to show up anyways, because their protest was more important than all the other protests that weren't allowed. Then the police should go home. They're not going to be able to do anything. Get off me! Move back! Get off me! With many observers Move believing that the police weren't holding up the law, but only protecting one of their own. But with an equal amount of cynics pointing out that the police weren't the only ones with their own agenda. With the star of the protest being an out-of-work actress, with more than one observer commenting on the lovely composition of each of the shots, I see a made-for-TV movie in your future. 
The book says, no more.